Good to have you with us this morning, and we are going to spend a little time talking about a very critical, very important issue. Joining us, Acting Monmouth County Prosecutor Christopher Vermiccioni, and uh, we are talking about the drug problem uh, in Monmouth County, which is reaching epidemic proportions, if not already there. First, thanks for joining us this morning. No, it's great to be here with you both again. Good morning. So Hi. Give us an overview, if you can. Of, give us just details on how, just, how deep this issue is in our, in our area. Well, I tell you what, in Monmouth County, the demand is so high that heroin deaths as a result of overdose have risen by 24% just in the age range of 18 to 25-year-olds. Think about that statistic. And everyone kind of widely recognizes one of the worst things that can happen in society is a homicide, right? Mm. Sure. Well, I'll give you an example. Last year, in 2013, we had 13 homicides in Monmouth County, which in and of itself is horrible. But you know what's really killing people in our streets in Monmouth? It's heroin abuse because we had 57 deaths just last year alone. And we are not talking about just mm -hmm. Asbury Park. We are talking about Spring Lake and Manus. When we are talking about towns where you don't think this is happening, there's you don't think there's a gang, you don't think there's somebody selling drugs, and yet our high schoolers and college students are dying. You're, you're exactly right, Liz. By and large, the markets you'll find are more often in suburban areas than urban areas. And we always say the one thing about heroin is it doesn't discriminate on the basis of race, gender, ethnicity, your, where you live, or levels of affluence or geography. It pervades all aspects of our society, unfortunately. So and for people who, uh, who have moved to suburban areas or live in suburban areas to try to avoid these type of things, why is it happening so, so much in those areas? Well, you know, people are looking, unfortunately, for ways to deal with pain and suffering. Uh. And heroin, it masks it masks that pain and suffering. It's incredibly effective. It's incredibly pure and rich. We have purity levels at average in this area at 45%, and we've seen samples upwards of 95%. Which could kill you with one dose. One $5 dose of heroin could kill you. It can kill you, and more importantly, it can hook you after one or two tries. It literally enslaves people just after dabbling in it. That's the scary thing. And so when your kids are out and you think they're just playing at the playground, one of your friend's dads could be handing them a pack of heroin. It could happen so easily when your kids are out. If you're saying, it's not my kid, he's hanging out with a safe group of kids. How do you, how do you, how do you as a mother prevent this from happening to your children? It's the old saying that we heard since the 1980s. I hate to bring it up again, but it's talking to your kids about these types of things. That's why I'm glad to be here with you this morning, to raise awareness, because it is in our communities, and it can happen. There's a we do intelligence reports and gathering, as does the Drug Enforcement Administration at the federal government level. It's unfortunately become kind of the chic and trendy drug that we saw cocaine was in the 80s. Heroin is most often snorted now rather than shot or injected like it used to be in the 70s. And let me give you a talking point here. In the 1970s, when heroin was, a, was an inner city, lower middle class problem, the purity rates were around 3 to 5 percent. Compare that to now where I told you the average is around 45 percent. We're lodged in the greatest heroin market on the face of the earth between Philadelphia, Newark, and New York City. And those are all short drives from where we live here in Monmouth. So now from what you've said, really what has to be done here is you have to talk to your kids to the point, and I'm not talking just young kids, but you can talk to them starting young, to the point where they don't want it because the only way to reduce the supply is to pr reduce the demand. That's exactly right. The, only, the, the, the drugs are going to find their way, unfortunately, into our county, into the country. We're, we're a country of free borders. And as long as the bad guys realize there's a market here, that there's demand, they're going to find ways to make money off that market. Um, but you're 100% right. You know, the, 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 the trouble, the one of the things, I don't want to talk all negative today. One of the best studies that I've learned about a few years ago was conducted in the Detroit, Michigan area. And they did a, a sampling, an analysis of graduating high school seniors that stayed drug-free at a number of different high schools there. And the consensus number one pick on why they stayed drug-free for those four years was because they didn't want to let their parents down. Mm. That's a good message for sure. people out there listening. Absolutely. Now, here in Monmouth County, we have uh, the great fortune of having so many terrific people working in law enforcement. But it's a big battle, right? Yes, sir, it is. And it takes that proverbial village. It, we work together closely with all the federal government law enforcement agencies and, of course, county government. It's not just my county. We're working with the, the uh, Office of the Attorney General and the, uh, uh, the, the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office, which is seeing similar epidemic problems like we are in Monmouth. But it takes that proverbial village, and it's, we're not going to arrest our way out of this problem. It's not just enforcement, enforcement of the drug laws. Equally, if not more important, is educating people 
to try to make this ugly, to try to make this scary to them, to let them appreciate that once it hooks you, it never lets go. Addiction is a lifelong battle. And I, what else scares me is that, you know, one of the, I guess, so-called gateway drugs is marijuana. And so many kids think, oh, smoking pot is no big deal. Some of this pot can kill you, too. And some of these drugs are being disguised as things like pop rocks or gummy bears, something that a kid could pass to you and say, hey, try this piece of candy. You're right, Liz. Purity levels in marijuana and several other drugs, they've risen uh, proportionally over the last 20, 30 years. And that's just like with anything. There's innovations in science and the horticultural behind it. It's getting richer, but it's getting richer because there's a demand for a richer, quicker high. Hmm. We certainly wish that we had more time. We really do. But in conclusion, um, what would you say to people uh, dealing with this, families dealing with it, moms and dads out there who are so concerned? Uh, what are just some of the key things to do? Just talk to your kids about these problems. And don't automatically presume that's not going to happen to my kid or that's not going on in the neighborhoods that I live in. That's what my most important message is here today, is you have to pay close attention to this. And I'm really, really happy to have the audience, and I thank you for the time. I think thank you so much. Prosecutor Christopher Grumiccioni, thank you so much. It was a true pleasure.